personal. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I've been waiting to make this video. This, the, I'm glad that we finally have the details so I can make this video because this is this is this, this, this is probably we're already like for me. I'm already thinking about 2024, 2023. My mind is done. I'm finishing the year strong, but I'm already thinking about 2024. You know the fights that are going to be happening in 2024, the the, the fights I want to go to in 2024, the travel arrangements I got to make in 2024, just just all those kind of things, right? So y'all can say the date. It's going to be a one momentous occasion, um, March the second at the Turning Stone Casino in Verona, New York. That's upstate New York, if you don't know. ESPN and the fine folks at Top Rank are going to be having a nice world title, doubleheader, two world title fights in the same card. Not just two world title fights, but two featherweight world title fights. You guys know, I've told you guys many times, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll tell you again, and I'll make a separate video to tell you some more. 2024 is going to be the year of the featherweight division. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And um, ESPN is, is helping me for me right because you're gonna have the fight i've been waiting for the like the part of the fight i'm most excited about which is um the wba world title fight uh between you know oda beck bruce lee komatov and um raymond savage ford you know uh this is a fight that i'm very excited about you guys know oda beck komatov he's Uzbek, he's from uzbekistan but he's local here to south florida i've been watching him train and i've i basically seen his whole career from the beginning right to now so i got a real appreciation for where he's at right now Top rank Bob Barham, they believed enough in him to sign him to the company and bet on him to beat Raymond Ford. Um, so he is the A side fighter in this fight. Ford, obviously, we know his story. You know, top amateur, a national national Golden Gloves champion, um, one of Eddie Hearn's first big young American signings. This is a chance for him to validate and shut up a lot of critics like myself and people who don't like to give him the credit he feels he deserves um, because they've seen him have subpar performances against the likes of Aaron Perez and Edward Vasquez. So it's a, it's a good fight, a real, a real explosive fight. Two really explosive southpaw power punchers. You know, I'm going to have a breakdown of this fight coming up soon. But, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a great chance for both men to really establish themselves and stick the flag in the ground in the featherweight division. Because right now, when you, when you look at the featherweight division... It's just ran by the Mexicans. I mean, you got Ray Vargas holding the WBC. You got Venado Lopez, who's also on this card, holding the IBF. You got the newly crowned WBO champion, Rafael Espinosa. So the winner of this fight is going to be the only non-Mexican champion. And I look very forward to seeing how it's going to happen, how it's going to all unfold. Because um, it's just a lot. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to um, dissect in this fight. You know, um, Raymond Ford, very good defensive fighter. Very uh, can be very slick in the pocket. Also has good punching power, but sometimes his volume isn't the highest. Odebeck Komatov has a good amateur background. Very tall, very big for the weight class. Elite gas tank. Can he use his elite gas tank to exploit maybe sometimes what could be a bit of a front runner? In for there's a lot of things stylistically about this fight that just got me so excited. And then you, when you got the fact that you know Raymond Ford was kind of like go, getting at me on Twitter because I I stated my opinion on the fight, that just makes me even more gassed up for the fight. You know. Um, so I'll be there. You can, if you're gonna be in Verona, New York for the card, I will be at this fight. I will be at the Turning Stone. So if you're gonna be there. Let me know. I'd love to meet some of you guys. So that's one. That, that's only one fight on the card, right? But then Top Rank said no. We, you know, here's another one. You got Venado Lopez, you know, defending his belt against Japan's very own Rhea Abby. You know, because I, I said I said Rhea Abe. All the Japanese people were saying, oh. You're pronouncing his name wrong. I'm, I might still be pronouncing his name wrong, right, name wrong but uh, Rhea Abbey, you know, a very uh, slick southpaw fighter, uh, fundamentally sound boxer. He's coming off of a, of a real, real impressive performance against the always game, always formidable, and always dangerous Kiko Martinez. And, you know, a lot of times fighters from the USA or fighters that are based in the USA or Mexico, they, they, they find themselves traveling to Japan. Well, guess what? Mr. Mr. Uh, Rhea is going to have to come to the USA and try to take the belt, rip the belt off of Venado. And, and style-wise, it's a real good fight because I feel like, you know, Venado um, is, a bit of a, is a gunslinging pressure Mexican fighter. He has a, a real good gas tank. He's proven to be a guy that's very dangerous down the stretch in fights. But he's fighting a guy in, 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 in Rhea, Abe, or Rhea Abbey that's very, very slick. Very, very hard to hit, 
but also he's not slick to the point where he's not throwing punches. Like he can throw punches at a, at a sharp punches down the middle with that Japanese base to, to, to keep you at bay. You know, not doesn't have a lot of knockouts, not a high knockout ratio, but he's not feather fisted. So um the fight within the fight for that matchup is gonna be can can the legs of the of, of the Japanese fighter neutralize the Mexican and, and and will his work rate be enough to you know, lower the a punch output. It will the defense be enough to lower the punch output of what Vanado is bringing to the table. So these are important fights for the featherweight division because, again, we know that the money man around these weights is the monster Nayo in a way. So um, the winner of these fights are going to be sitting pretty to potentially be in line to get an in a way fight in whether it be uh, later on next year or or maybe like early 2025. So it's it's very big, and you know, you guys know for me. Before Odebeck Komatov was even like fighting Thomas Ward, before he was even Lee Woods mandatory, before the Raymond Ford thing was even a thing, I told you all back in March, the fight I want to see in the featherweight division is Nayawa Inouye versus Odebeck Komatov. And if Odebeck Komatov is successful against Raymond Ford, the prospects of that fight happening increase exponentially. And um, he becomes a guy that's all of a sudden going to be going to be you know on the radar of the monster because um you know we're targeting. You know, just so long as he can be Marlon Topolis and, you know, whenever he leaves 122, guys like Venado, Komotov, um, and Rafael Espinosa, anybody with a belt, they're going to be on his radar. So, really, really fun doubleheader. This is probably going to be one of the, it, I would say it'll probably be the first or the second. It'll be, because I'm, I'm going to be in Vegas in February, um, you know, might even be in Vegas in January, I don't know yet, but... Um, this is going to be one of the first fights I go to next year, um, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, there probably is no fight in the first quarter of 2024 that has me as quite as excited as Komatov versus Ford. And the fact that they added Venado Lopez versus uh, Rhea Abbey to the card, that makes me even more excited because I remember when Venado was trying to petition, because remember, Venado had fought two voluntaries. One of them was completely unnecessary with Joel Gonzalez. And then, the, and then the IBF told him, okay, it's time to fight your mandatory, uh, Rhea uh, Abbey. And then then um, he tried to file an exemption to fight Robesi, and the, and the IBF said no, to hell with that. So now he's fighting his mandatory that I wanted to see him fight, and that makes me very happy. So I, 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 I was really excited about that fight. So the fact that both those fights are on the same card, sign me up. I'll, I'll see y'all I'll see y'all in upstate New York. Should be a lot of fun, but... uh. Let me know what you guys think. Who are you guys favoring in those two fights? Um, what do you guys, you guys got any thoughts, insights into those matchups? Uh, uh, Komotov versus Ford and as well as L Lopez versus uh, um, Abby. Uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.